All right, welcome back to the last video in the Learn to Code playlist. And in this video, we're going to be completing the course. So the complex project is going to be a build off of the intermediate project. But if you're coming from the last video, you know that we made some modifications to that intermediate project. So in the serial monitor of the host, we're going to take in both a number and a desired function. We're going to take both of those values that we enter and store those in some array. We're going to take that array, send it to the partner over UART based off of the data that the partner gets, it's going to deconstruct that message and then implement the correct function, calculate some result and then store that result. Now that result is going to be sent over UART to the host. But while this is all happening, the host is going to be running the same computation, getting some answer and storing it. So based off of the message that the host gets, it's going to take that message, deconstruct it, and then compare the answer that the partner got or the computation with whatever answer it got. And then based off of that comparison, if both of the answers were the same, we're going to turn on some LED. Otherwise, we display some error message. The host is again going to be the Mega 2560, while the partner is the Nano Every. So if we look at those data sheets, here we have the Nano Every. And you can see here in the bottom right, we have the communication channel, or serial one. And looking at the 2560, if we zoom in again on the right, we know from the data sheet that we have multiple UART channels. We're going to be using channel one, so D18 and D19. So if all these things are good to go, we can look at the code. So we're going to create this array right here, and we're going to name it entered values. And that's just going to be the array from the user inputs that we enter into the serial monitor. Then we need another byte. So that's going to be received from partner. Now from this array that we're going to receive from the partner, you can see that it has two elements. So one of those elements is obviously going to be the answer. And that would be good enough. Well, we're actually going to include another element that's just going to verify the function. And we can define that LED output pin. So in this case, it is D3. And then we just create some other integers. Next, we can make our functions. And we're just going to work with integers here because it's going to be a little bit easier to store that data. So we can have one function that will square whatever the input was into the serial monitor. The second function that we have is simply going to double the input. And now if we go into the setup, and we're just going to call that LED one output an output. We're going to define the speed of the serial monitor. Now we're going to implement that serial set timeout. So this is going to be a timeout for five seconds. And because we're sending data over the RX and TX1 lines, we need to initialize the serial communication on those. And we can actually just match that to what the serial monitor is. And then after we initialize all of the communication related things, we can simply just set that LED one. So now if we actually get into the loop, the first thing that we're going to do is print a line that says enter an integer to do some operation on. And then we're going to use this serial read string command. So we're familiar with that. And then after we read this string, we're going to do some checks. So the first thing that we're going to check is if nothing was entered. So this would relate to this timeout condition right here. So if that occurs, we simply say no number entered, restarting. And of course it might get a little bit weird because of the zero condition right here. But notice with both of our functions, if the input was a zero, the output would also be a zero. So kind of useless. But if we actually got an input, then we're going to use that to int command on the string. And we know if we use this to int command and there's some invalid thing that happens, we get a zero. So if we've cleared all of these conditions, it means that something was entered into the serial monitor and it is able to be interpreted as an integer. So then the serial monitor will prompt the user to enter either FX1 or FX2 based off of which function they want to implement. So now we can use this read string until. So whatever we enter, either FX1 or FX2, that's going to get stored as a string. And now we have another if statement. So notice here we have a lot of if statements going on. This definitely isn't the most optimal way to do this. And if you're seeing this code and you're saying, well, this is really complex, you could just do it this way. That means you probably learned something again in this course. So good job. But nevertheless, if the string that we stored was equal to fx1, we're simply going to store that function to run as a one. So now what we do, we actually populate that entered values array with the initial element or the zeroth element as the user number. So that's what we got up here. And then the next value is this function to run. So that's what we created right here. So we're simply going to be sending an array of bytes and those bytes are just going to be numbers. So now on this host Arduino off of that TX1 pin, we're just going to write this array and we're going to be writing both of the elements inside that array. So the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to force a while loop. So we're just going to have this condition while true. So now we're going to be stuck inside of this. And what we're going to do, we're going to say if serial one available is greater than zero. So that means that on the receiving side, so that RX one pin, 
if some data came into that, then we enter this if statement. And because some message was received, we are going to read the bytes of that received message, and we're going to store it inside of that received from partner array or buffer that we created originally. And we're going to be looking for two elements. One is going to be the value and one is going to be the function signifier. So now we can actually extract the data from those elements. So now we're going to have a pretty complex if statement here. If you can interpret line 55, you're pretty much good to go. So we're going to say if whatever the zeroth element was from what we read up here, and then we're going to set that equal to something. And what we're going to be doing there is calling that function one, so fx1, again, that we defined right here. But we're going to be plugging in user number, which again, we got from right here. So we're going to be comparing what we received from the partner and what we calculated. And if those two things are the exact same, then we're going to print something now. It's to the serial monitor. Then we're going to write that LED output pin to be high. And then we have a break command in here. So this break command, we know that that's going to force us out of this while loop here. But if this wasn't the condition, then we would print that we got some error and that's it. We wouldn't turn that LED on. But again, we would have this break and actually force us to terminate out of our if statement all the way up here. We would have some delay so that LED would be on for one second and then we would turn it off and then we would loop all the way back up and we would continue through that verification of the inputs. And again, we would read the string. But now, if we didn't get FX1 and we got FX2, we would enter this. So the only difference from this and the if statement to FX1 is that we're storing function to run equal to two, then putting that inside of the entered value and then writing that to the partner. Again, we force a while loop and wait for some message to come back. We check that message. If it's valid, turn that LED on, otherwise give an error. But if we didn't get FX1 or FX2, then we're just going to print something to the serial monitor. And then notice here we put this delay and this digital right for the LED to be low outside of this if, else if, and else statement. And notice this isn't exactly a problem because if we had this error statement instead for any of these functions, or even this else statement, we're still just going to have a delay. And then writing the LED pin low doesn't really do anything because it never went high to begin with. So it's kind of just a redundant line of code there. We could have thrown this into each of these statements here. Now, if we look at the partner side of the code, now nicely enough with the partner code, you can actually pretty much copy and paste from the host code because it's going to be pretty similar. And we actually don't need this entered values and get rid of that. But we know that we're going to have some received data from the host and we can change that received from partner to received from host. Again, we have our similar functions that we had from the host. And what we can do, we can actually comment out the serial begin and serial set timeout because we're not going to be using the serial monitor for this. We don't need to. We are only using that communication channel for RX and TX1. So now inside the loop, we're simply going to say if serial one available is greater than zero, which means that we got some data into the RX line. Well, if that's the case, then we're going to read that data. And what we read, we're going to store that in the array received from host. So the first thing that we actually need to look at is what function are we going to be running? So we're gonna have an if and then an else if statement here. So if we look at this received from host buffer or array, we look at element one, we say if that was equal to one, well, then we know that we're gonna be running function one. So this is going to be the computation. And then again, we just pin another byte just to signify what function we were running. So after we create this array, simply just send it using the serial one, right? So now we're using the TX line on the partner Arduino. Otherwise, if we received a two, then we just run FX2. Again, do a similar thing, then send that data off back to the host. So on screen right now, you'll see the hardware of this code working along with the logic analyzer and what the data that it's recording being sent and received is. So we have one channel for the sending side and then one channel for the receiving side. We can actually decode this information independently. So if we enter something like a five and we enter function one to be done, we can see that we'll send a five and then a one. Then some operation will occur on both the host and the partner. So the result of function one would be squaring it. So the answer would be 25. The message that we send back is 25 and one. And like I said, this will be the final video for this course. In the next series that I'm doing, I'm kind of torn right now. There's two things that I want to look at. The first one is a signal analysis course, or because we've looked at signals pretty heavily in this course, it's a good stepping stone. But this course is pretty math heavy, and I haven't gone over any math courses on this channel. So the other option would be something like a calculus series. So do I assume that the viewer knows a lot of math and can comprehend everything in this course? Or do I need to build up all of this information and then go into this course? I don't know. So we will see what ends up happening.
But if you learn anything new, useful, please like, comment, share, subscribe. In this course, we went from declaring variables all the way to writing code with communication protocols that's implemented on hardware. So a lot was accomplished here, and we will see you in the next playlist.